Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh, Weekend update show up everybody is uh, doing well. If you could be so kind, uh, take a second, like, click, uh, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Again, support the channel uh, so I can continue to make uh, these videos uh, for you so uh, I can give you an unbiased view of the market. Again, for all you guys who are uh, interested, there's a link below. Uh, 30 days if you are interested in pivots, uh, test drive the pivots, all the stuff you hear me talk about, uh, the news flow, the option flow, it's all broadcasted there. So if you are interested in pivots, uh, all you got to do is click the link below uh, and take a spin. So uh, let's talk about the market. Uh, obviously, the big story uh, this week is the election. No matter who your candidate is, just understand the market is the market. It's not going to go away. It's not going to be better or worse because a candidate uh, is in office. I'm not a big politi uh, political guy, but I do understand the ramifications of understanding that no matter who is in office, the market is going to function uh, efficiently. Again, going back to uh, the first uh, president in my trading career was Bill Clinton, was a Democrat with an incredible uh, bull market. Next president was George Bush, was Republican. We had a horrific market with 9-11, uh, the mortgage crisis, the Iraq war. It was absolutely horrific. Then Obama came in, which was a Democrat, phenomenal bull market run. Then Trump came in, was Republican, phenomenal bull market run. No matter what your opinion is on Biden, again, we are at all-time highs, a phenomenal bull market run. So initially, you're going to see a lot of uh, knee-jerk reactions. Again, the polls are all over the place. It's all the narrative, how it's being spun. One polls have Trump up way ahead. Uh, other polls have uh, Harris uh, you know, getting closer, taking the lead. We'll see what happens. Do I think we're going to have a uh, a very quick and decisive decision come uh, election night? Probably not. Uh, so you're going to see the market continue to trade in a very, very violent, erratic cycle. Uh, for all traders out there, I don't care if your experience is 20 minutes or 20 years, you're going to be put in situations just like we saw in the latter part of last week that you're going to be making emotional choices. You don't want to trade a market that you're making emotional choices. You don't want to trade a market that you are uncomfortable in entering a trade because again, no matter how good uh, your your setup is, one right, one blip of the news, one blip of another candidate taking the lead and blah, 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 vice versa can really affect your trade. So if you can, right, if you can, like what I plan to do this week is I don't want to buy on strength and I don't want to short on weakness. I want to wait till those channels are taken out and then kind of enter on the retrace. At least if I enter on the retrace, I already know my max pain because that range is going to be so important. So you have to kind of adjust to your environment. Um, I think we'll see an incredibly exaggerated uh, next couple of days, even spilling over to Wednesday until we have a definitive uh, winner in the election. Uh, obviously, the other big story this week is going to be uh, the FOMC. The, the, uh, it looks like another 25 basis points is on the table. That is the anticipation of the meeting. So we have a very, very big, aggressive uh, spin cycle. Okay, It's very, very important to understand that. And again, you don't want excitement. Uh, you know, anytime I get excitement in my trades, I'm forced to put on a trade that I have no business putting on trades. And it's very, very easy uh, to fall in love with the bright lights, with with with, the, with 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 all the noise. But it's very, very beneficial to yourself just to kind of wait till the noise dies out. That's why you don't trade the first thirty seconds that the market's open. You kind of wait till the initial noise is down. That's why we always watch opening range highs and opening range lows because you need the you need the personality of the market to develop. You need kind of some sort of trend personality to start developing before you can, you can put your money at ease and knowing you have a high probability setup instead of chaos. Again, nobody makes money in chaos. I know you've heard about it. I know it's great. I know somebody else has made money. I have never really done well with chaos. I like things to be methodical, boring, predictable. And that's where you see the institutional money flow come in. And when you look at the scoreboard uh, this week, again, we had a nasty, nasty reversal on Thursday. Uh, a lot of it had to do, and this is the NASDAQ 100. A lot of that had to do uh, with earnings. You had Meta, you had Microsoft uh, not performing well. 
Uh, the SMCI story continues to bleed uh, on the semiconductors. Again, Chief Auditor uh, resigned. Uh, we are seeing, continuing to see, a massive, massive option flow to the downside, short-term expiration in the 2021s. Um, so is that going to spill over to uh, this week as well? Again, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Uh, Friday, right? Friday afternoon, uh, NVIDIA got added uh, to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, be, note, be noteworthy that I, I see a lot of people talking about, well, NVIDIA is going to save the semiconductors this week. Keep this in mind. The, 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 the new story is for NVIDIA, right? It's not for Micron. It's not for AMD. It's not for Intel. It's kind of for Intel because Intel is getting thrown out of the Dow. Uh, Nvidia is putting put in, but it's not. It's not going to save the semiconductors. It's it's an individual uh, individual headline for Nvidia. So just be very careful trying to buy the semiconductors into strength, knowing that charts are looking like this. Right, MU is holding on to dear life uh, below the fifty day moving average. AMAT is well below the fifty day moving average. You have names. For example, like Clack, dis destroyed, right? So the semiconductor group does not look good. AMD does not look good. So don't buy stocks that are that look like they're in death spiral molds because somebody else had a good headline. Again, this is a good headline for NVIDIA. It's not a great headline for everything else. And speaking of NVIDIA, uh, again, now that we're probably around the 140 area, uh, it's still going to be very interesting to see if they can take out the October highs. I'm having my doubts, just not, even, not necessarily on NVIDIA, just like on everything else, just because how close we are into levels of interest. And when you see the QQQs, we're not that far away from the 50-day moving average. As of right now, everything's okay. But again, if you're a first-time viewer of this uh, broadcast, above the 50-day moving average is super bullish. When you get below the 50-day moving average, it becomes a major, major sell cycle. It's not really something to argue about. It's it's literally a sell cycle. So if you see uh, the Qs on uh, July the 24th lost uh, the 50-day moving average, and they went from 474 all the way to 423 in a matter of two weeks. And when they reclaimed the 50-day moving average on 9-11, um, we literally went from 451 all the way up to 500. So it's been very, very interesting to see if the market could hold on to uh, the levels of uh, above the 50-day moving average. Individual names, right? Individual names. Uh, the Bitcoin names have been going up and down, tied directly to Bitcoin. Uh, Coinbase looks like it, it, it's hanging on here. You know, it's hanging on here. Uh, Thursday, it had an incredible engulfing candle that basically took out about three weeks worth of buying. Watch if the bottom of the range should gets confirmed because if it does and there's more selling on Bitcoin, this Coinbase is going to get hit. MSTR, it's holding up a little bit better than Coinbase, but it's going to be the same theme. Uh, it lost the 10-day moving average. Why is it? Why is the 10-day important? Because if you go back to October the 3rd, it held the 10-day. October the 4th held the 10-day. October the, was it the 10th? held the 10-day, right? You can see it on this green line, kept on holding, 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 but we lost the 10-day moving average on Friday. And if we start losing and confirming Friday's channels, we're going to go lower uh, as well. From the technology space, right? The technology space, it, it's not a pretty picture anymore. You know, two weeks ago, everything was aggressive, everything was good, uh, but it's not great. I'm going to start out with the, the ones that I still like, that are still healthy. Uh, the still healthy ones are Tesla. Tesla had a great quarter Really great quarter. I put in a run to uh, 273. Keep this in mind. The stock run from 212 to 273 in four days. So this is very, very healthy. Uh, the most important part, the most important part about Tesla is the idea that it needs to get above a previous day's range. That's where I'm going to be um, really waiting for Tesla because I think this move has been great. I think the organic um, I think the organic uh, rest has been absolutely great. The last thing we want to do is continuously start looking for bottoms, bottoms, bottoms. I get this is a completely buy the dip scenario, but I'd like to see Tesla get back above at least one day's worth of highs to start seeing if the options market starts betting highs again. Uh, Amazon had a phenomenal quarter, absolutely phenomenal quarter. Uh, the continuation of a burden here is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has sold... Uh, $16 billion worth of stock on Friday alone. I believe it's on Friday alone. That 200 level is going to be, 
you know, a brick wall. I don't want to have anything to do with that brick wall. Um, if if we can get a dip in Amazon in the next couple of sessions and we get into rising daily support, then yes, absolutely. I'd like to be a buyer. But the last thing I want to do is go back into that brick wall of 200, which I got rejected from on Friday and lost a dollar instantly. Um, but the most important part is we want to see Bezos get cleaned up. This is a perfect example of don't rush now. Okay, don't rush. We know who the seller is. We know how, he, he, we know how much borderline he has left to sell. So let them clean up. Let the market do the heavy lifting for us. And at worst case scenario, once they do, we'll start looking at the July highs and we can get long above uh, the July highs. Uh, names like Micron, like I mentioned, um, very close to losing the 50-day moving average. Any close below the 50-day uh, is super, super bearish. Again, we don't want to see uh, Micron lose the 50-day because, again, this is one of the leaders. This had this had one of the really good runs uh, over the last month or so that, it, that did very, very well into earnings. So the last thing you want to see is Micron give up the 50-day moving average, uh, and that could be a, a really uh, big problem. Uh, names like Netflix, right? Netflix, if you guys remember, what it was the first uh, beta name or the Magnificent Seven uh, to report their earnings. It's kind of going sideways now. All it needs to do, it's been putting in this five-day base and it's been rejected off this five-day base uh, for the last, well, I guess five days. Watch this thing, right? If the market doesn't come in, watch Netflix. If it can finally start getting above this five-day base here, I think we could start getting back to the October high. So it's definitely a name uh, we want to watch. Same notes from Google, same as Tesla. Really good quarter, right? Really good quarter. Three days in a row now of lower highs and lower lows. Again, same notes as Tesla. I'd like to see it just get back above one previous day's worth of range. Uh, it's very, very important that they take out one one full day of, of selling. If that's the case, the stock is going to revert uh, back to the upside. Um, I, I think it's very, very important to understand uh, the dynamics of this week, guys. Um, like Monday and Tuesday, I had a you know, pretty good Monday and Tuesday. And now, once we started getting to Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, things got so choppy. You know, things got so exaggerated. I finally, I found myself uh, putting on trades that normally I would not. And it's something that I realized what I did wrong, right? I realized what I did wrong. And now going into Monday, Tuesday, I'm prepared to kind of stifle it a little bit. Basically, put the risk reward in my hand. So instead of, like I said a couple of minutes ago, instead of going into uh, the trade into strength like I normally would, or going to the strength into weakness like I normally would, I'd like to kind of use the safer approach this week. So if I see a stock breaking out, not named Tesla, if I see a stock breaking out, I will definitely wait for the first pullback into the rising support instead of just taking that opening range second entry that I do into strike just to curb a lot of the cushion. Because again, like I said a few minutes ago, the last thing we want to see, okay, is we're in a really, really good trade, a really great setup, and a headline comes across that so-and-so just took the lead in this poll. So-and-so could lose the swing state. And the last thing you want to do is be in a trade that is... Uh, predicated on a headline. It's like being, you know, it's like trading the whole day as an FOMC event. So it's very, very important to understand. But guys, remember this, okay? Remember this uh, going into uh, this week, okay? No matter what your your candidate is, I understand there's a lot of people emotional. This person better win or the country goes to zero. That person better win or the country goes to zero. Guys, I give you my, my word. Whether it's a Democratic president or Republican president, your life is contingent of what you do for yourself, what you do for your family, the, the ecosystem that you've provided and set foundation for all these years. Um, you know, in my adult life, again, we went through Democrats, we went through Republicans. I'm a registered Republican. I don't care who the candidate is. I vote Republican down the line. But I, I understand no matter who is in office, the market's the market. It's not there to make us wealthy. It's not that there to pacify. Uh, it's not there to, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to make us whole. It's there to function. And no matter who the president is, the market, the market, global financial markets are going to function. It's your supply. It's your demand. Uh, it's your ability to have a process that could withstand um, one type of market or another that's going to put you in the driver's seat. And if you want to have a healthy life, right? A healthy life has nothing to do with trading. The last thing you want to do is sit there and emotionally be so charged that you believe that your life is contingent upon who's in office. It's not. You believe in yourself. 
you're going to get have the life that you deserve. If you are sitting there hoping the country changes and the government changes, I don't care who's in office. Okay, they're all talking heads, guys. The further, the faster you understand this or not, they're not going to. No, no Democrat, no Republicans going to make your life better. You can make your life better, and only you, guys. God bless. Have a great remainder of your Sunday, and with God's help, I will see you all on the field tomorrow. Take care.